Good evening, everybody. Take your hymn books and turn to page 40, Leaning on the Everlasting lar Arms. Lar something. Please stand. Page 40. second. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. last. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from Trust me. You're done? Yeah. All three verses. <laughs> Good morning. Nice to see you. Some of you fell for it, didn't you? Ready to pray? What's it mean to pray in Jesus' name? What's it mean? Through him? I'm sorry? Okay, what else? In Jesus' name. Authority? I'm sorry? Because of? In Jesus' name. Where's Jesus sitting when you pray? Right next to him. Do you think some people talk to God like they deserve something and Jesus says, I don't know them. Right? And you know, we live in a world, let me remind you, have a seat. John Sheets is tumbling. We live in a world that wants to believe several things. Anything's a God. They want to believe that everybody goes to heaven. And they want to believe that God listens to everybody. Now, though that would be nice if it was that way, right? But it is not. Then there's no use for Jesus to die when someone says to me, oh, everybody goes to heaven. Then I'll say, then please explain to me why Jesus died. You know what they say? Well, I'm not sure. Well, I am. And I don't know everything, but I know what the Bible says. And you only get to heaven because of Jesus. And you only get your prayers answered because of everything you all said. You all were right. There's no, it's because he knows and he wants it and he knows you and he can tell the Father. And remember when he prayed? John 17. He said, I got it right here. He said, Father, he starts out, Father, glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. Jesus. 
Jesus is not going to do something that won't glorify the Father. So in Jesus' name, I think we're giving him permission to make our prayer what it should be. Because that's what we want, right? When I pray, my battle or the battle is, I want what I want. But what I ought to want is what he wants. Now we're going to pray. Father, help us tonight to be so close to you, so united to you, as Jesus prayed in this chapter, John 17, that we would be one. He said, I want them to be one like you. He said, like, like you and I, and he was talking about you and he, Father, that that unity, that oneness should be so close that our prayers are what you want. And Lord, there are so many times, so many times, that I'm praying, thinking about what I want. The best prayer in Jesus' name is what the Father gets glorified by. Teach us how to pray like that. Work tonight. Change our hearts. Stir us up. Help us to rejoice in what Christ has done for us. Help us to lean on the everlasting arms. I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn to page 38. Glorious things of thee are spoken. We'll sing the first and the last. God does, because he knows he's going to win, right? Do you have a prayer list? Would you make a note next to Alice Ross? Bill has informed me, Bill Strout, that she is at health win, and she is over COVID, but the stroke has affected she cannot walk. Would you pray that the Lord would work in her? God can either give you what you need, or he'll give you what he wants you to have. So pray that God will work, give grace, or we don't know. I wish I knew everything God wanted, don't you? Era did something. She ran off with your money. Kevin doesn't know where she is. Oh, she's here. She got her heart right. The computer crashed, and we just want to keep you up on the church computer if if your check doesn't go through if there, there's a delay in the deposits so um there's not a problem other than computers crash eh eh so they do so um we need you to retithe we need you to retithe double 
Ushers, come. We're going to give you the chance tonight to be blessed by retithing. No, do what you want. Re is that a Bible word, retithe? I think it is. I think, I think it's in there. I think it's in there. Right in the front, and then pages that are white, you just write it in. Love offering. <laughs> Love offering. Did you fix it yet? Oh, okay. You just got, well, just, you should be able to touch it. And... <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we praise you that you don't need our money, but you sure would certainly like our devotion. And so we tonight uh, express our love and devotion to you by what we give. And, Lord, we're here tonight to give our heart, give our life, to give our time, to give everything that you want. And some of it's money, and you don't do that because you're broke. You do that because you want to check and test our loyalty. And Lord, we just know that you can meet our needs. And there might be someone in this room trusting you for a need, a physical need. And, uh, Lord, thank you that you can. You can meet any need. Thank you that you answer prayer. Thank you, Lord, that as we sang, that's so unique. You smile at your foes. Thank you that we have the victory. Thank you, God, for the victory. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Page 36, The Wonder of It All. Sing the first and the last. There's the wonder of sunset. In 1957, George Beverly Shea knew my parents, and he said, it's a wonder that boy was born. I want to write a song about him, and uh, we decided it should be the wonder of Je I'm just kidding. You believe that? Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22.
Luke chapter 22. I'm going to tell you a story and then I want to read this. I know a Christian lady, wonderful Christian. I know her and her husband. I've always been impressed. I've talked to her, talked to him. Others that know them have spoke very, very highly of them. I was witnessing to two ladies. This is recent. And that lady that I'm talking about with honorable testimony happened to be around. And they saw me wave to her. The two ladies I was witnessing to said to me, you don't know her, do you? I said, why? They said, oh, she's trouble. I said, is that right? Oh, they rolled their eyes. It's nobody in here. I'd tell you if it was. I'd mention names. They rolled their eyes. Well, you know what? That just kind of thwarted my whole salvation plan. Well, we know her. Yeah, she believes that too. Let me tell you something. I never saw that coming. Luke chapter 22. That's it. Verse 31, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said, Peter said, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Don't ever take lightly that Satan is your personal enemy. He'll say things about you. He'll say things to you. He's determined to destroy anyone that is committed in any way to Jesus Christ. He'll use lost people. He'll use other Christians. He'll use people that are close. When the Lord told Peter or Simon that Satan, verse 31, Satan hath desired to have you. Notice he uses a word that you and I just kind of look at like it's a the or a. But he says, Simon, Simon, as soon as he calls his name, he uses this word, behold. And that means be on the lookout. Because something could happen that you never see coming. Now you and I, no Christians, if I were to say, knowing them, if you knew them, and if you know someone who isn't quite the Christian they ought to be, and I said, oh, you know, they have some problems in their life, and you knew about it, you would agree with me and say, Boy, I, I agree. Yeah, that but it does look they better be careful. Peter is warned by the best warner in the world. I mean, nobody knows you like Jesus knows you. And if he says something about you, be warned. 
Take it to heart. Don't deny it. Don't question it. If he tells you to be whole, man, you ought to give up sleep to make sure you see what's coming. Simon, Simon, verse 31, behold. He is warned. The Lord is warning Peter that something's going to happen and he better watch. You ever done that? Have you ever thought you had something covered and you didn't? My uncle was telling me the story. He called me the other day. He said, hey, I got to tell you something. And by the way, the time when I told the story about putting him on speakerphone so I can do work, he called me right after that and he said, hey. And I go, hey, uncle. And he goes, am I on speakerphone? So he's going to hear this one. He said he was driving down the road. It was early in the morning. He was going to golf. He got up at 5. He finished his first job. At 7 in the morning, he's going to get, you imagine, 86 years old. He finishes one job. He goes to golf. He goes home. He rests a minute, and then he goes to his second job. 80, no, I said 86, not 26, 86. 7 in the morning, he's driving. I've been with him. He's fine. He's one of us. You know, if he's got time, he drives. He's there to look around while he's driving, though. He's not there to drive. That's the way it was meant to be. But he said he's watching, and all of a sudden, this lady in front of him slams her brakes and tries to turn left. He sees it, hits the brakes, swerves to the right to avoid her, ends up in a ditch, front bumper first, Bang, airbag doesn't go off, but boy, he's stuck. She drove away. He called me yesterday. He said, guess what? I said, what? He said, my van's totaled. I said, what'd you hit? He said, a ditch. He said, 300,000 miles. It's a 2004. He said, they gave me twice what it's worth. He said, number one, I never saw it coming when she stopped and tried to turn and I swerved off. He said, and I never saw it coming when they gave me twice what the van's worth. That must be God. I said, no, I think it's a fact that you talk to me so much. God's doing that through me to bless you. He didn't catch on to that very quick. When a Christian decides to live for Christ, it provokes the devil. You become a threat. You see, Peter had it in him. The Lord knew that. God wanted to use, Jesus wanted to use Peter. And so he warns him, he tells him to look out. Verse 31, behold, look out, Peter. Satan desires to have you that he may sift you as wheat. I'm going to pray. Lord, work in our hearts tonight. Help us to be on the lookout. To realize that the devil wants us. If we're trying to live for God, if we're trying to do anything for God, the devil's after us. And he always tries to do something that we never think he would do. He uses things we never think he would use. He's so subtle, so sly. Help us to be on the lookout. Help us to run to you. If you warn us, then you're the best one to help us. Peter didn't run to you. He ran away and said, I got this. You don't have to pray for me. I'm good. I'm okay. Don't worry about me. Lord, if that's our attitude, take that away from us. That's the wrong attitude. We need to be on the lookout. We need to watch it. And that's what you're saying to him. Behold, watch out, Peter. Work tonight in every one of us. Don't let any of us, don't let one of us think that this message isn't for us. That's exactly what the devil's going to try to do. 
speak to us, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. The devil has to have a target. And he doesn't target lost people. He targets saved people. He wants you to deny him. He wants you, Amy and I were speaking recently, and I said, isn't it funny how things happen? And it's easy for us to blame a person, but we forget that the devil, he's, he's the one that harasses us. He uses us as he uses someone in your life to sift you, to bring you to a point where the only thing left is the bad. We, we ought to come out good when, when we get rubbed the wrong way. We ought to just praise the Lord. We sang that God smiles at his foes. That's what we ought to be doing. But no, what's it do? It just sifts away all the good and leaves the bad. We say something we shouldn't. We lash out. We get impatient. Right? Right? Jesus is saying to Peter that the devil wants to sift you. He thinks you're nothing. He wants you to, to let go of all the good and, and just expose the bad. And if that's all you see, you'll get depressed. If you think you're bad, 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 you'll give up. If God thought you that bad, were that bad, he wouldn't have died for you. But he died for you because he knows what you can be. He knows what you can do. And certainly, when, when the Lord says this to Peter, the Lord sees Pentecost. He doesn't, he doesn't see, oh, that dumb Peter. What a proud, cocky, good for nothing. What's the Lord see? He sees this guy getting up, preaching a message. Man, you read the first few chapters of Acts. Such boldness. Peter is so bold. He's in their face. He's preached and the Spirit of God came down. And people were saved not by, the, not by the ones or the tens or the hundreds. They were saved by the thousands. That's special. I don't know if the devil saw that coming, but I know that the devil knows when Jesus is trying to make you better, he's going to do everything he can to make you worse. Think up to this point for three years, three years, Peter has watched the Lord perform miracles. It's been with him. It's hurt him. I kind of got intrigued. I had some time to think, which isn't very often. It happened a couple of times 10 years ago. And I was wondering, what would be my first words if I was God and I came from heaven and I landed on earth? What's the first thing I would say to everybody? Like, I'm here. Y'all are lucky. Came to save your soul. You know the first thing Jesus said? Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. I read that and I'm thinking, thanks a lot, Lord. He's not talking about being poor. He's talking about being poor in spirit, being humble. Needing God, poor, begging. That's what he's talking about. Blessed are those that need God. What, what's your commentary on verse 33? Does Peter need God? No. Lord, I'm ready. Does he need God? No, not to him. Does he need God? Yes, to us. But to him, I'm ready. What did the Lord just say? Satan's going to sift you, man. 
He's going to bring out all your bad qualities. For three years, Peter, Peter himself was preaching. Peter himself was teaching. Peter himself was doing miracles. Maybe that got to his head. Maybe he thought, hey, I'm pretty good. Right? He did miracles. For three years, he cast out demons, healed the sick. I sure don't like being sifted by the devil. But if I stop and think, if I behold, verse 31, Simon, Simon, behold. Look at this. Don't miss this. See this. Don't let this miss your, your vision. Behold, when the devil sifts me, here's what I know. God trusts that I can handle it. Because according to the Bible, there is no temptation taken you. Shake your head. There, it's in there. There is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able. That's what he said. I didn't say that. He said that. I, I dispute that verse. Because sometimes it seems like, man, the devil's coming after me and there's no help. But God promised me he wouldn't give me something or allow the devil to sift me to the point that I couldn't walk away from it. James said, resist the devil and he'll flee. When the devil tries to sift you, it's because you're a threat to him. It's because your surrender to God's will makes you a problem to what he's trying to do. That's a compliment. Do you understand that? When you're sifted, I, uh, I don't know about you, but let me go to me, I know me. When I'm sifted, I, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Nobody goes through it like me. The devil's picking on me. You've heard me say that, but not lately. The devil's at my house this week. And by the way, he was. Say, no, he's at my house. No, he wasn't. He's at my house. And, listen, and the greater that God works in your life, the greater the sifting. Because the devil is out to humble you. He likes you humble. First thing Jesus said, blessed is the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of God. But see, when the devil humbles you, it's for his kingdom. It's to make you look bad. It's to turn off lost people to Christianity. How do I argue with someone who's telling me, when I tell them they ought to be a Christian, that if that person's a Christian, they want nothing to do with it? Now where do I go? Oh, don't, just ignore them. Don't mind them. That's why it's so important that all of us realize someone else may be trying to witness to someone that you know, and if your life is inconsistent, you're going to turn that whole thing off. Be an example for every other Christian. Even when the Lord warned Peter that he would fail. Verse 31. Even when the Lord told Peter that the devil was coming after him, Peter refused to believe that. Now listen, I'm not telling you to spend your time waiting for the devil. I'm just telling you to watch out. Like Jesus said to Peter, behold, Simon, Simon, behold. See it coming. Watch for it. Say, Lord, help me to see it when it comes. Peter was not looking. He was not thinking it could happen to him. Jesus said it's so bad, verse 32, I prayed for you. He said it's so bad, Peter, that your faith is going to be attacked. 
and I'm praying it won't fail. Say, what's all that mean? I don't know, but it doesn't sound good. When Jesus is praying that your faith won't fail, that means the attack must be severe. Peter never saw it coming. You move on in this chapter and you, you see the three times. Remember? Wouldn't you just love to be next to Peter the first time? When they said, don't, uh, don't you go to his church, or however, that you know. Don't you go to his church. What did Peter say? No, not me. Wouldn't you just love to sit down next to him and go, excuse me, Peter, may I quote you? I am ready. He wasn't ready. He didn't sound ready, did he? Second time they came to him, they said, excuse me, boy, you sure look like you go to Lakeside. I'm twisting the scriptures a little bit. What did Peter say? Never been there. Never, ever been there. That's a lie. Wouldn't you love to just plop down next to him and say, Peter, do you remember what you said, man? Do you remember that Jesus said the devil was going to do this? And here they're tempting you to deny him. You're doing it. Don't do it. The third time they came and said, we've seen you. Park at Lakeside, walk in the door with a Bible, and walk out. And we have video footage of you sleeping during the service. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to say that. And you deny and say, that, that is not true. There's no way. Leave me alone. It never happened. And then the rooster crowed. Peter wept. Why? Because he's a fool. Say, that's pretty harsh. No, when you deny God, you're a fool. If Peter saw it coming, if he truly would behold, like the Lord told him to behold, then he would listen to Jesus. But he boasts about never letting the Lord down. Verse 33, Lord, I would never let you down. I'm ready. I'll go to prison. I'll even die. I, am I missing something here? I mean, if you're going to die for someone... That should mean that if you say, don't you go to their church? Wouldn't you say, I'm a card-carrying member. I've been going for so many years. I love it. It's the best place. I need it. What's Peter do? I don't even know where it is. I don't know where Lake Ploil is. Not Lake Ploil, Lakeville. I don't, I don't even know where that is. Be careful when you boast. I would never do that, really. Peter never saw it coming. He never thought he would. He told the Lord, told Jesus. He didn't just write it on Facebook. He didn't just text it to someone. He said to the Lord's face. Verse 33, he said to him, Lord, look at verse 33, Lord, I mean, he sounds like he means it, doesn't he? Lord, I am ready. What what Jesus call him? Simon. Little stone. Pebble. Nothing. Calls him that twice. Don't think like Peter. I can handle this. No, you can't. Is that not, come on, is that not just a way of saying every time you and I read the scriptures, we ought to say, I need that. We ought not say, oh, that's nice. No, we ought to be saying, I need that. The Lord said it. He talked to me. That's his book. When on that book and read that book, he's talking to me. He knows me. You've done it. You've read something and said, boy, did I really need that? 
Look, you, no, just go to where it should go. God knows what you need. It wasn't a coincidence. When you say, you preach on what I've been reading about, you think that's magic? There's a God that's doing that. He's trying to get your attention. He's trying to get you to behold, to look, to see what could happen. And, and like Peter, don't ever think that you, you can never fall. Peter said, I, I would never do that. Let Satan attack me. Let Satan harass me. Let him assault me. I'll die with you. That didn't happen. I mean, what is it? Hours? A day? You ever made a commitment like that? You ever gone on a diet? I don't get drunk. But sometimes I'll say, I am not going to eat that. And then it, it's not very long. I'll fall. I mean, I, when I fall, I jump, dive. I don't trip and stumble. Peter's bragging about being so spiritual. Isn't he spiritual? He's going to go to prison. I mean, if they try to shut me up because I follow you and put me in prison, I'll go. That's what he's saying. He's saying if, if they try to uh, uh, cut my life off, I'll die. That's what he said, didn't he? Boy, be careful what you promise God. Watch what you brag about. It's easy for us to catch everybody else in their boasting. Oh, they seem kind of proud, don't they? And that's just what they say when they walk away from us. Boy, they seem kind of proud, don't they? I, I have a, I'm bothered by something in this. I just want to share it with you. If the Lord knew that the devil was going to sift Peter and he was going to fall big time, why did he let him do it? I don't want an answer. I, I just want to tell you that, that why, why, you know why, you know where I'm going. Why wouldn't he just keep that from happening? He could, couldn't he? Man, here the Lord knows Peter's going to deny him three times. Why wouldn't he just go, Gabriel, grab some angels, grab, grab the devil, sidetrack him, shove him down an alley, shove him in a corner, because, man, he's going after Peter, and it's going to be ugly. You say, he doesn't do that for me. Exactly. I don't know about you, but some of the greatest lessons I've learned, I've learned on my back or on my face after I've stumbled and fell. You don't forget those. It's funny how soon we forget our victories. Stand up, do right. Man, the next thing we know, we're down. Boy, when you're down, you remember those lessons. There was something inside. Now listen. There was something inside of Peter. This blows my mind. I didn't come up with this. this is just, I'm just stating facts. There was something inside of Peter that three years of teaching by the Lord Jesus Christ could not change. Can you imagine sitting under the teaching of Jesus Christ? They were there when he said the first thing that he said publicly when he left heaven and came to earth. First thing, blessed are the poor in spirit. Peter was there. And everything Jesus said, Peter heard. Can you imagine that three years of preaching and teaching by the Lord could not knock that out of Peter? How long have some of you been a Christian? More than three years. And some of us are still dealing with some stuff, aren't we? You would think all this preaching, it knock it right out of us. Not Jesus. He told them exactly what they needed to hear. 
Remember all the miracles. Remember all the things, the wonders that Peter was a part of. That didn't humble him. Even after Christ personally warns Peter, he's still filled with pride. There's nothing left for Jesus to do but to let, are you listening? But to let Peter be sifted by the devil. Isn't it great, though? He warns us. The response of Peter, Peter and the Lord are talking. The Lord says, Simon, you need to see something you're not seeing. The devil is going to put you through something, and you're going to fall. The wrong response is, I got this. The wrong response is, don't worry about me. Don't pray for me. Because the Lord said, I prayed for you. Peter didn't want to say it, but he was saying, what are you praying? Don't pray for me. Peter said, wait a minute. I was going to say it just hit me, but that would be lying. Wait a minute. Isn't Peter the one that the Lord said, come pray with me? In this chapter, pray with me so you don't enter. Isn't he the one that fell asleep? I mean, that's not a sin when you go to bed at night. Some of you want to fall asleep. Right? But when you're praying, that's a bad time to sleep. Or when you're in church. Did that come out again? <laughs> Jesus said, pray for me. Peter said, will do. Heavenly the... Wouldn't that wake Peter up? Wouldn't Peter say, man, I, Lord, you said the devil's going to sift me. I get it because I can't even stay awake when, when we're supposed to pray. If I asked you if you ever fell asleep when you're praying, many of you would say yes. Say, well, I'm just tired. You're not tired. The devil's trying to knock you out. Peter had to be broken. He had to be humbled. Jesus told him, I've prayed for you. Not I will pray, but I've been praying. He saw it coming a long time ago. And you and I need to listen to the Lord. He knows how we can fail. We need him to strengthen. Lord, show me what I need for this day. Lord, fill my mind with what you want to show me because I'm going to come up again. You've done it. You've read something. You said, man, did I need that today? That wasn't a coincidence. That wasn't magic. That's God. Praise him for it. Thank him for it. He's doing that. You're not so smart. Well, maybe I just know what's going to happen to me, and I'm just good at picking scriptures. You're not good at picking scriptures. You need to be poor in spirit. Realize you need God. You need God. Isn't that funny? The first thing Jesus said was be poor in spirit. You need me. You need me. And that's what the Lord is saying to Peter. Peter, you need me. He loved Peter enough to pray for him. He loved Peter enough to confront him about his pride. He didn't lecture Peter. He didn't say, you should have listened to me. You should have stayed awake and prayed with me in the garden. He just said, I'm praying for you. Boy, sometimes it's fun to tell people off, isn't it? I didn't say it's right. I said it's fun. And then afterwards you go, I should have done that. Isn't it great that the Lord just prays for us? He knows what we are. The psalmist wrote, he remembers my frame that I'm dust. That's like saying dirt. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through, if you love the Lord, he's praying for you. He knows. 
who better to pray for you than the one who knows what you're going to go through? Nobody else knows that. <laughs> that helped you snap out of it, didn't it? I mean, think about it. Who better to say, I've, 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 I've prayed for you. He knew what was coming. He didn't say, oh, I... Something just doesn't seem right. It's not what the Lord said. He said, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. How do you think the Lord prayed? Oh, God, give him scripture. He knows exactly how to pray. He knows exactly what to tell the, the Father. Jesus didn't pray that... Peter wouldn't be sifted. He prayed that his faith wouldn't fail. You've heard it. You know it. You've read it. Some of us, I was going to say some of you. I have to be honest. Some of us only learn the lessons we need to learn by being sifted. I would never do that. Great advice I got when I was in college. Great advice. Great advice. Preacher said to me, don't ever think it can't happen to you. Don't ever think it can't happen to you. Peter's faith was tested. The devil sifted him. And you and I know, you and I know, he didn't see it. You and I know, we're reading it. You and I know, hey, you and I know Peter had pride. Peter didn't know it. What did Peter say? When the Lord said, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. What did Peter say? I'm good. He didn't say, thank you, Lord. Uh, what do you know? Help me. What should I do? Would you, would you leave Jesus after he said that? Would you stick to him like glue? Would you say, man, he knows. I'm here. No, I'm coming with you. I'm coming with you. No, help me, help me, help me. You know why this story is in the Bible? So we can... I think Peter is such of a bad character. You know why this story is in the Bible? To warn us. Simon, Simon, behold. Watch. You know, Jesus said that. Got a minute? Look at verse 39. He came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives. His disciples also followed him. And he was at the place. He said to them, pray that you enter not into temptation. Do you pray that way? I usually find myself confessing sin and asking for power over sin. He's saying pray that you don't even get close to it. Pray that you don't enter. Don't get where. In other words, you say, he's saying pray that you don't even get to where you can get into temptation. But isn't it funny that somebody, he doesn't just, don't you wish sometimes God would just grab you by the head? The, the kids hate when my dad, my dad learned a lesson when he would cut a little kid's hair. He'd have that board he'd put on top of the barber chair, arms, set them kids up there. They'd wiggle. Who, what, what do you expect? Then he'd give them a sucker while he's cutting their hair. I thought this is the dumbest thing. He'd give them a sucker. Hair is all over the sucker. Now try to take the sucker away. So he, they just, the parents are like, no, they'll be okay. It's hair. They're licking that thing. I'm thinking, oh, that's sick. So now the kids squirming. So what's dad do? Bears down on their head. What do they do? Nobody's going to bear down on my head. They're fighting, screaming. Now they're shaking. They're just screaming bloody murder. They've thrown the sucker. They're going to kill somebody if they ever get up out of this headlock. That's okay, he'll be okay. And dad's bearing down, and he's just butchering their hair, and the kids are fighting. You 
Then he had the guys who'd sit in the barber's chair and fall asleep. The humming of the clipper. I remember Dad holding their head up, cutting their hair. <laughs> what a contrast. If you have failed, repent. Peter failed. He had three solid years of Bible teaching and Bible object lessons from the master himself. Don't whine and moan because you fail. Peter failed, and if you failed, repent and then share what you've experienced with other Christians. Remember Jesus said, Behold, Satan has desired to have you the enemy, verse 32, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. We need to be helping each other. We need to say to someone, you need to open your eyes. Because I'm seeing something that isn't going to turn out well. You understand? When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. How do you strengthen thy brethren? You go to them and you go, look, don't ever think you don't need God. Don't ever act like you've got it together. Don't ever act like you'll do anything you think you'll do. You always need him. You just need to depend on him. You need to rely on him. Don't act. Don't act proud. If you've got pride, I spend a good deal of my time in prayer begging God to show me my pride. Help me be humble. Don't make me humble. Help me be humble. Help me see it. Help me to see my pride. What a help it would be if you and I would warn others. That's why Jesus said, you're going to fall, but it won't be wasted because you're going to warn others. You're going to get other people to open their eyes, and you're going to say, look, I've been there. I've been there. I wish I would have kept my eyes open, but I didn't. And the Lord told me, you imagine Peter relating this story to the brethren. Hey, brethren, he said, Jesus told me to my face that Satan was going to sift me. And they're like, what'd you do? Peter said, well, I said, I don't need no prayer. I'm good. Don't leave it. Don't worry about me. I'll die for you. And they said, but wait a minute, Peter. Didn't you deny him? Everybody heard that story. Peter said, yes, I did. I should have listened to the Lord. I should have listened to the Lord. There's something in your life that you should be listening to the Lord about. Something you're scooting away from. Something you're running from. Something you're not saying. Maybe I'll just spend some time while we pray. Maybe I'll just spend some time saying, Lord, maybe there's something I'm not seeing you want me to see. It's possible there is, right? Because I, I know y'all pretty well. And none of you look like any of the Trinity. So I'm pretty sure that there's probably something in your life that you don't see. If Peter didn't see it after living and eating and walking and preaching and listening to the Lord, I'm sure there's something that we're missing. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Heavenly Father, help us see. Help us see. Open our eyes. Thank you that the Spirit of God, you said, is the one that can enlighten us. Oh, Holy Spirit, enlighten us to something in our life, probably pride. Show us the pride in our life. Show us that thing that Satan's going to use to tear us down. Show us that thing that we're not seeing that Satan's going to use to discourage us. Show us that thing, Holy Spirit, that the devil wants to use that's already in our life that we need to repent of. And it may be before it hurts us bad, we can repent of it. You just help us see it. And Peter should have said, Lord, help me to see what you're saying. Help me to see it, Lord. I would pray now, Father, if there's something in my life that I'm not seeing, help me to see it. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Is that your prayer? Hey, God, help me to see it. Help me to see it.
here's my hand preacher, that's me, I need God, I need God to show it to me, I need God to show it to me, there's something, I, I, I want him to show me that I, I may not be seeing, your head bowed, your eyes closed, preacher, that, that's me, that's me, that's me, there's something in my life, I need him to show me, I want to see it, I want to see it, boy, you got to swallow a lot of pride to say, Lord, I, I want to see it, I do want to see it, Lord, I do want to see it, I do want to see it, anybody else, here's my hand, I, I want to see it, Lord, I need to see it, I need to see it, I want to see it, Lord, I need to see it. Show it to me, please. Heavenly Father, the sin that made the devil the devil was pride. The devil became the top dog in heaven to the very lowest of creatures because of pride. You never use the word when you talk to Peter, but he sure exposed his pride. No, oh God, show us the pride in our lives. Show us how to be poor in spirit. Help every one of us to cling to you, to not leave you, do not say, no, I, I'm sure wherever you go, I'll go. Peter should have said, Lord, I want to go where you want me to go. Help me see what I'm supposed to see. Open our eyes, Spirit of God, open our eyes to what we're not seeing that we need to see. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen.